everyone, the Blur Lover channel here to talk about my five favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movies, so please enjoy. At number five is A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4, called The Dream Masters, directed by Rennie Harlan, released in 1988, a year after Dream Warriors. A solid sequel that actually did much better at the box office than The Dream Warriors, which was a surprise. Launched the directing career of Rennie Harlan, who went on to direct Die Hard 2, The Adventures of Fort Fairline, Cliffhanger, and countless other films. They were doing this movie during, you know, I think the writer's strike or back. I saw the Never Sleep Again um, documentary. If you've not seen it, just type it up on YouTube. You will find literally that on YouTube. So that's how I saw it. Great documentary. Loved it. Love an Eminem Street 4 because it's very inventive. Ernie Harlan at the time was just using every trick in the book. He was doing everything. Robert Shade, um, the president and owner of New Line Cinema, really didn't have any confidence with Rennie Harlan about directing this film. But he ended up turning out a good product, a very well done, awesome, fun. Love A Nightmare on Elm Street 4. Like I said, keeping it short and sweet. At number four is Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Now you're probably saying, why you have that on your top five? Well, I used to hate the film. Wasn't really much a fan of it. As I gotten older and watching multiple viewings on TV or on when it was on Netflix, I just started to enjoy what the movie was about, the story. Yes, Jesse and Freddy, you know, Freddy would be inside of Jesse and just messing with him and doing the same things. It's like being a body being possessed and just anything. And it just started to get better and better as multiple viewings. We'll call this sort of the gay version of A Nightmare on Elm Street 2. I sort of see it with all the gay innuendos in the film. If you, Like I said, if you didn't watch the documentary, never, when they were making it, they had no idea until they saw the film. And I was like, oh shit, we were making sort of like a gay horror movie back then in 1985. Nancy did not return. Um, at the time, um, Robert England wasn't going to return as Freddy. They had a, you know, like a stunt guy. Who was Freddy Krueger? If you see the scene in the shower where he's coming through the steam and he's walking like you know, like a zombie or like a monster. That was just a stunt guy. Robert England came back and did a pretty good job. The makeup here was more terrifying. He was here more, he spoke a little more here, but he was very scary. It did keep with the same flavor of the first one, but it just went off the rails with all the possession and all the stuff here. And then Freddie being very attracted to Jesse, even though the character of Jesse, the guy that played him in real life was gay. I ran up through Two, Freddy's Revenge has grown on me over the years. It's a great film. Just take away everything that you've seen in the film and just enjoy it for yourself. Believe me, you will enjoy it. At number three is Wes Craven's A New Nightmare. Now, why I put New Nightmare up here, even though a lot of people tell me it's a slow burn, doesn't have Freddy lot in the film. It's been a, coming after the people who made him famous. I mean, I don't know why Wes Craven's A New Nightmare is a great film. It is a perfectly great 10 year um, anniversary gift to the original Nightmare on Elm Street, which came out in 1984. Uh, Wes Craven's new Nightmare came out in 1994. It was 10 years, the 10 year anniversary of the film. Wes Craven was asked by Robert Shea, the president and owner of New Night Cinema to come back to the Nightmare franchise. He did, and he came and did a great job with this film. They were shooting this film during the earthquakes of 1994 in Los Angeles. And it sort of made the film better. It does have great inventive gags. Um, seeing Freddy wearing an overcoat with a different type of glove. It was very different at the time. So um, the film was not a very big hit. Prior to that, we had Freddy's Day, The Final Nightmare. That was supposed to be the last Nightmare on Elm Street movie to put Freddy Krueger to bed. It wasn't. So Wes Craven came back and wrote a very well inventive type of thriller. It was great. Um, the late, great Wes Craven was just very well, he just knew the character. And I think coming back to it and saying to his critics, like, you know what? That he did a really good job in creating something to a franchise. They did go off the rails after, I think, um, Nightmare on Elm Street 5 and Freddy's Dead. But it did invent, it did bring back Kruger, but we really didn't get another Nightmare on Elm Street film after that for years until Freddy vs. Jason, but that's not a Nightmare on Elm Street film. And then the, the, the disasters, you know, garbage of that remake produced by Michael Bay. Like, we didn't need that remake. And now we're getting Robert England back again on the Goldbergs Halloween special coming out on October 24th of 2018. See the photos of him as Freddy Krueger again is great. It's not a film, guys, but at least we're going to get something awesome. So Wes Craven's new nightmare 
at number three. At number two is a Nightmare on Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors. Yes, the Dream Warriors, where it was directed by um, Chuck Russell, co-written by Frank Darabont, and um, the late, great Wes Craven as well. Originally, this one was supposed to be much darker um, Nightmare on Elm Street film until Darabont and Russell came in and sort of lightened it up again with some humor, different types of ways not to make it so dark. And they did a good job. It's basically a bunch of mental patients who are fighting off Freddy Krueger in their dreams. It is a great film. The return of um, Heather Levenkamp as Nancy, her father as well. It's a really good film, really entertaining, holds up, and it's one of the best out there in the franchise. I think it's everybody's personal favorite, one of mine's as well, but I put it at number two. It's really well done. I heard a couple years ago there were rumblings that they wanted to do a remake or sort of a direct sequel to um, Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors, which would be great, but that's going to be difficult. I know Terminator's doing a sequel after two, you know, the, the new Halloween after part one, and Robocop after the first one, so this is going to probably become a new craze in Hollywood, remaking or rebooting things after the some sequels. So that means that, as we all know, Nightmare on Elm Street 2 was never mentioned in 3, so 1 and 3, and probably if they do it like that, would be great. But you got to get a new Freddy Krueger because Robert England is already 71 years old. And even though the photos of him on the Goldberg set as Freddy is great, we don't know what we're going to get. But I do enjoy A Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream War. Sorry, I'm not going to review it and tell you what my favorite stuff is. Because I'm trying to keep this video on a tight um, time so you guys won't get bored after a certain while. But I love Dream Warriors. And Kincaid is one of my favorite characters in the film you know he says Kruger where you at you burnt face pussy that's my boy I got pissed off when they killed him in part four man if you're gonna bring him back keep him in the film man I want to see him kick Kruger's ass he barely did it he really didn't give Freddy a fight in three in Dream Wars but it was just great to see him have that human strength and all that stuff he was doing and I really enjoyed Kincaid man he should have lived on but he's one of my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street characters so that was Nightmare on Elm Street the Dream Wars at number two all right, guys, my number one favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie is, and you probably guess is the original 1984 classic directed by Wes Craven, also written by Wes Craven, based on true facts that he read on that a kid had died in his dreams because he's terrorizing him and doing all kinds of shit in his dreams. So the kid died in his dreams. The family found, you know, um, next to his bed, you know, a coffee maker, coffee. It just literally was just what the same thing that he used in the original and i'm on elm street the original is my favorite but also the one that sort of scared me was that freddy krueger was this figure that i never was introduced to until one day where my mom and my sister were watching downstairs i think i woke up from a nap we used to rent a lot of videos from our local video store called video land which is no longer in business it's sad that local video stores are closing and that fun stuff is just gone of the you know, picking your movies in a VHS cassette is all gone. But my mom used to rent videos every other week when we had the money. So her and my older sister decided to rent A Nightmare on Elm Street. And I'm thinking, what the hell is all that noise? And I come down and I hear, Shh. I can't do the, 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 the sound effect of Freddy's glove hitting the wall or something. And I hear it and I see, oh shit, I see Kruger right there. I'm like, my mom didn't even know I was there. I was just like dead silent like this. Like, And I see the scene where he's chasing after Tina. And I'm like, oh shit. Who's this dude? Never heard of a Nightmare on Elm Street. I was standing there watching it. Like we had a stairway here. And it was like peeping around the corner. Just like this the whole time, guys. And I was so freaked out. I couldn't even move. That's how freaky it was. And she just, I went upstairs. That whole night for days and days, I couldn't sleep. And that was like around 1987. So this is before, you know, we can rent that, you know, videos like that. And then this was, so that was the first time I was introduced. So the next week and after that, guess what? The new Nightmare on Elm Street 3 Dream Warriors hit VHS and they rented it. And there is Kruger basically tormenting the kid with the um, puppets and he's Basically laughing with the sky after he kills the kid. And I'm like this again. I said, how many of the movies has this guy made? And I only thought at the time 
that the original Nightmare on Elm Street and Nightmare on Elm Street 3 were only like two movies until one day I went to my mom's friend's house and there was Nightmare on Elm Street 2 Freddy's Revenge playing. I'm like, I was a kid at the time. I didn't know. And as I got older, they made more movies, more movies. And I understood there was a part one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and Freddy's dead. So from the age of certain, like, seven until, like, 13, dude. Yeah, I was a big pussy when I was 13. So I was afraid of Freddy Krueger at a certain age, but then as I grew up, it was basically just an ad was just a made-up character to entertain people and to scare the shit out of kids and entertain teens and grown-ups. So that's why I don't, I'm not going to review it. That's why it's my favorite because it's the one that scared and terrified the shit out of me. Just like anybody else who will leave it in the comments after this video, what Freddy Krueger means, but it gave you the nightmares. You couldn't sleep. You, know, you would pee your bed. A lot of shit would happen with Krueger, and that's why he is the number one ultimate horror villain icon because he has the ways of just getting through to your fears going inside of you and just making you helpless and before he kills you he just plays with you and he just does the shit he does because he's freddy krueger i know that this top five favorite nightmare on elm street video is everywhere i'm not gonna give you a review and give you my favorite parts because i'm trying to keep this video under a certain time and right now the video says i'm going over 15 minutes but a nightmare on elm street is my favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movie because it's the one that sort of introduced me to Freddy Krueger and all of what he brung me for the last few years from the age of 7 to 13. But I faced it and now I can watch him. It does freak me out when I do watch the original to this day because it does bring you back or brings that memory of what the hell Freddy Krueger was going to do. And Wes Craven created a great character. Rest in peace, Wes Craven. You are missed terribly. And um, I'm sorry that Michael Bay made a shitty remake to your classic 1984 original. So yeah, guys, let me know what is your top five favorite or your top favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movies. You can include all of them, even Freddy vs. Jason, even that crappy remake if you want. Let me know what is your top five favorites or your top ten or whatever. There's probably eight of them films, so probably your top eight favorite Nightmare on Elm Street movies or nine include that remake like I said let me know how you was introduced to a Nightmare on Elm Street was it a kid a teenager let me know in the comments like I said I literally went down the stairs and there was Freddy right there and my eyes and my mouth was like this without saying one word of why a Nightmare on Elm Street and Freddy Krueger have terrorized me from 7 to 13 guys so let me know how you were introduced to Freddy Krueger and Nightmare on Elm Street. Give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Brewer Library channel. Give me to 1,000 subscribers in 2018. I'm currently right now at 880, but every time I get a new subscriber, it goes up and goes down and goes up and goes down. YouTube really needs to fix this damn website because it is pissing me off. It doesn't keep my subscriber count up or down. I don't know what's going on. YouTube, get your shit together. Subscribe to the Blue Lover channel if you're not. Post notifications bell. Once you hit that bell, you will get all my new videos uploaded into your inboxes. So please hit that notifications bell because YouTube does not send any notifications once my new videos are up in your inboxes. And share the video as well. I am the Blue Lover channel, and I catch all of you guys next time.